evening everyone and welcome to another class or another discussion today we're going to talk about the social construction of reality and that the social construction of reality is through interaction among people who use symbols to interpret one another's behavior and assign meaning to perceptions and experience and so basically what we're saying here is that in society, every individual have a definition of objective reality that is based on his or her subjective definition of reality. Um, the social construction of reality is a process by which people relatively shape reality through social interactions. They look at the situations around them as their reality without realizing they are surrounded by social constructs that help build their definitions. Um, sociologists believe that people define situations they encounter as real. This has become known as the definition of the situation or the Thomas theorem. Based on their reality of what is real, they integrate into society. How do we formulate our reality? And what makes our objective, um, subjective realities real to us? What role does socialization play in assisting us with our formulation of reality? Our language, images, personality, symbolisms, and observations of our surrounding are defined for us by society. So every day we play roles and we talked about this. Every day we play roles and we perform based on how we define our give definition to our situation, which is the definition we formulate in our subjective reality based on objective definitions from society. We can redefine our definition of the situation based on how we want things to go since our reality is fluid and not fixed. The Thomas Theorem says situations that are defined as real are real in their consequences. Okay? Many situations we find ourselves in stump us, especially if we are unfamiliar with how to define the situation. The social construction of reality is the process by which people creatively shape reality through social interactions. Every environment encountered is an opportunity to create a new reality. That social interaction is a complex negotiation that rebuilds reality. The problem most people have when they interact in social environments is definition or understanding of the situation. They are not observant as they should be. The socialization process is observable based on how citizens act and see themselves within a given society. Although society itself, okay, is hard to define, it is real and within the realm of observation. By observing the citizens within a society, you can see how effective the process of socialization is on the individual. We are fluent beings who can be manipulated and programmed to act and do specific things. We can be taught to see life a different way, but the way to change our realities is to remove ourselves from the reality formulating situation. We know we live in a society because we have been told that is what our social structure is. But allowing socialization to define images by allowing socialization to define images and symbols around us, we allow with the power to formulate how we think and see objects around us. Socialization is the process in which citizens are prepared to participate in social systems. 
Systems are a taken for granted reality. The process of socialization continues until death. So we're forever living in social systems. Every day we participate socially in some type of system. And within that system, there are other citizens, other bodies participating in that same system. And based on how we are defining ourselves in the situations we find ourselves in every single day of our lives, that becomes how we build our reality. And so, we are not robots. We do have some say in the construction of our reality based on the social locations we choose or the corners in life that we occupy because of where we are located in society. An example of a social location will be your culture or your family or your job or your territory and as well as your ethnicity. Many of us are socially constructed in what Barbara calls the multicultural mesh. <laughs> Individuals have many cultural experiences that involve mixed families and mixed societies such as the United States. We're all entangled in the multicultural mesh. In other words, we don't have anything that is basically pure. We don't have a pure ethnicity we don't have a pure society. Everything is mixed. So we have a mix of cultures. We have a mix of societies, a mix of ethnicities, which means we have a mix of experiences within experiences within experiences. It's almost like the flower of life. So we continue to embed ourselves even further in these multicultural meshes. And so, therefore, we find ourselves trying to find the center of our reality when in reality, everything that we are in has been there and formulated our reality. And as our definition of the situation and our cultural experiences, as they unravel, so does our reality. If you've noticed that there are many times where you are fixated on a particular idea or idealism or thought or experience. And when you find a contradiction to that, it unravels your reality. You have to rethink what you have constructed as a reality for that situation. So, so it is with the self. The self we build in one culture may be shocked when it encounters another culture. Our ideas about reality are shaped by media images that we encounter every day of our lives. The special genius of this is to make the whole process seem so normal and natural that the very art of socialization is invisible. That is a powerful statement. That we are being socialized to the degree that the norms, the values, um, the, uh, the, the things that we consider sacred and profane, our behaviors, um, our influences are all becoming so normal to us that we're unable, we're totally unable to see the invisible social construction of those interactions, experiences, realities, and relationships. And that's not a bad thing to say that because our reality is socially constructed, that there's something wrong with that. That apparently is the way that our human experience is supposed to happen. We are to interact with one another. Um, some religions tell us that when man was created, he was instructed to go and interact. He was instructed to go and have an experience with nature, with the environment. There was a command to go and be a social animal, to be a social person, a social, have a social experience. And so the problem is that we have become so, the, the, the social construction of these interactions and symbolisms are, have all become invisible to us. And therefore we're working on an autonomical scale where everything is automatic. Everywhere we encounter social interaction, we encounter images, 
languages and behaviors that are already laid out for us and we act accordingly. When you're home, many of the socially constructed barriers come off, but you still have some constructs, constructs that remain in place no matter where you go, such as morals, values, and profane and sacred ideas. We learn who we are based on what others do. We generalize the other, and that help us see beyond our own persons. The only way that an individual can indirectly understand or experience their situation is through the generalized other, that is those within their same social group. By generalizing others, we understand the frame or the social construction of our environment. So in other words, when you are in the presence of other people, you don't see them as individuals or you don't specifically pay attention to their individual actions. You generalize them. And by generalizing them, you incorporate them into who you are. And so your identity in some kind of way familiarizes itself with the identity of the generalized other, which also gives you a personhood or it magnifies yourself or your individuality. Because what you're saying is, if I can see that person in myself, then I can see myself. So you generalize the other in order to give yourself definition and identification. And that may not be necessarily plain to some of you, but I know to sociology students or social science students, to psychology students, this is a very, very simple process of how we learn to identify ourselves as a self. In other words, we look at others as um, W.E.B. Du Bois says, we, we, in other words, we have a double consciousness and he used that in reference to uh, black and white issues and relationships, but there's a double consciousness that we have be about ourselves, the self that we have created and the other. So there is based on that, a social construction of reality because everything that we consider reality has everything to do with our environment, our social interactions, symbolisms, and how we function. Everything together builds a reality for us. So every social location we find ourselves in has rules and limits preset to guide our behavior and inter interactions. Those guides and limits form our reality. If people define situations as real, they are real in their consequences. And in what has become known as the definition of the situation or the Thomas Thurm, what you determine to be real is real. However, your ideas about what is real does not come from the fact that you have determined something to be real. It comes from your having grown up in a society that teaches you what is real and what is not how to act and how not to act. Your social construct supports society's ideals. Your reality coincides with society's norms and values, abnorms, with society's uh, sacred and profane ideas, with society's expectations of behavior. Your reality is in, uh, is in cohesion with that reality. So society and its systemic uh, effects on us helps program who we are and how, and, and our expectations of ourselves and of others and of our environment. Very few people study natural sciences. Very few people study social sciences or the hard sciences. So in other words, we don't really test reality. We don't really uh, experiment with reality to find out if it's real. We have those who do, but then those of us who live everyday lives, we just take it for granted that our reality is our own personal experiences and is built on our own personal experiences where we fail in that is that we fail to see the impact that society has on who we have become and the persons that we have created. 
There are objective realities that do not need us to recognize that they are real. They still affect us. What makes objective realities real for us is determined by symbolisms and naming of those symbols. By naming and defining objects, we make them real. Symbols are the heart of cultural systems. For with them, we construct thoughts, ideas, and other ways of representing reality to others and to ourselves. Symbols are what something represents to us. They mostly take the form of words used in spoken and written language. They can take on other forms such as the big yellow M on the top of all McDonald's. Excuse me. Regardless of what symbolism or form you use, your reality is being constructed. It will be easy to have an effective social interaction if we understood people's definition of the situation. In other words, if you and I are in a situation and we are trying to find the reality of that situation, if I understood how you are defining the situation we're in and you understood how I am defining the situation we're in, we could have a better understanding of one another. So in other words, if we can get a grasp um, of what society wants us to consider, if, if we can flow, I would say, into the norms of society, we can find a cohesive definition of our situation. Whereas I'm not defining the situation as one thing and you're defining it as something else. In other words, we're both looking at it and we're both defining the symbolisms and everything that's in the situation and we're coming to the same conclusion. So in other words, it's very easy to see that when we're in McDonald's. We all know we're in McDonald's and we're here to maybe to buy fast food, to buy something, some fries, a burger or whatever. So it's not, we don't have any difficulty trying to define the reality of our situation. But now that McDonald's is becoming something more, it's becoming a place where people can sit, use the internet, they can talk, they can interact with one another. There's so many things that are happening that it's becoming a multicultural social mesh as opposed to just a fast food restaurant. So now we have to both define why are we here? What is the reality? What is the reason we're here? What reality are we building this interaction on? And so this becomes a, a starting point for us to begin to understand one another. Another um, idea of defining the definition of the situation is in a marriage. You often see married couples who can't seem to understand each other or who can't seem to get into, the, into a cohesive reality of what their situation is. is because they're defining the situation differently. The husband may be looking at the situation and saying, well, this is a financial issue. The wife may be looking at the situation and say, no, this is an emotional problem. This is a problem of you not paying enough attention to me. So they're not defining the situation to, at, you know, the same. They're seeing it different. And based on their definition of their situation, that is their reality. And until you can get them to both, to see the definition of their situation as the same, you will continue to have this divide. And so this is what we mean by the definition of, sit of the situation when it comes to defining the situations we're in that construct our reality. And another example is, for instance, you cannot change the reality of the husband who says, we're not getting along because the finances are bad. Until you can persuade him that there is a different definition of the situation that is causing the problem, you cannot change his reality. So it is with the wife. If the wife is saying, listen, this marriage is a mess because you are so busy worrying about finances, you're not thinking about how to build a better relationship. And so they have two definitions of the same situation. And so this is how society, how we interact in society. We define the situation in society differently. We look at our jobs and we see our jobs as different. We look at our homes, we see our homes differently. We don't see it with the same definition. We define things based on our own definitions and how we have constructed and, be, and learned how to define our situation. So 
regardless of what symbolism or form you use, your reality is being constructed. It would be easy to have an effective social interaction if we understood people's definition of the situation because how they define the situation will determine how real it is to them and this will determine how they will act. Social, social relationships dramaturgically from the perspective of the theatrical performance. This is how Elkin defines it. Beginning with the conception of self as something about which we wish to create an impression. We perform every day of our lives. We present a self in every social environment we encounter. There are times when we alter the self depending on the definition of the situation. When we run into problems with definitions, we experience role conflict and role strain. At this point, we choose how to act based on our best definition of the situation or phenomenology. This is the study of conscious human experience in everyday life. All members of the social world take it for granted. We interact with one another every day not knowing fully what is happening to ourselves. Reality is not fixed, it is fluid. It is based on the self we are at any given time in our social situation or our social interaction. Individuals are supposed to sacrifice their autonomy for organizational needs and the self is reduced to the person's role in the organizational structure. This concept supports the theory that society is responsible for the reality we have come to know and the self that we are is connected to that reality. However, we must find a conscious way to always be present in whatever we do. Now, why is it we all need to be present? Because if you don't understand society's effect on your life, you really don't really understand yourself. Because to understand society is to understand yourself. To understand yourself is to understand society. You and society are interconnected. There is no society without a you. There is no you without society. So in other words, we're talking about the objective person that you believe that you are. We know that reality is tangible. Some people believe reality is first subjective, while others believe reality is objective. The same way when we're dealing with truth. If I'm talking to you and I believe a certain truth and you believe another type of truth, it's real to, uh, to me subjectively, but objectively is not real to you. And the same with your method of truth or your idea of what you believe is true. So what we're talking about here is the construction of our reality. All types of realities that we conclude are real. Anything we conclude to be real. Anything we conclude to be of substance. Something that is objective. Something that, can, that we can actually share with others and they can identify with it. The best way to really um, interact with others' reality is through everyday norms, names, definition, and frames that are used to give meaning to everyday life. When we define a situation, that definition becomes a form of social influence by implying what are or are not appropriate responses to it. In other words, when you are in a situation, that situation has certain norms and behaviors that are expected. And when you perform those norms and behaviors, then you give definition, you give prominent definition to the situation. So others begin to generalize your behavior and say, okay, I can see myself by generalizing the other. And so by generalizing your behavior and your norms, then I say, okay, this is what is expected of me in this situation. So I begin to perform and I begin to take on those same norms and behaviors. Language frames our understanding of a social situation 
the same way a picture frame marks off the picture from the rest of the surrounding background. We carve out our existence based on the objective material in our social location. Whenever we are in a social location, we must interact in that location based on the frame that has been socially constructed for us. This is how we build on our reality. This is how we're able to recognize or define the social environment in which we find ourselves. A female could not walk into a crowded men's bathroom without drawing attention to herself. <coughs> that social construct, <coughs> excuse me, does not include members of the opposite sex. So it becomes a detour from the normal definition of what men's bathroom is. The social frame in which the bathroom is defined builds a certain reality that warrants certain behaviors. When you throw a monkey wrench in, into the mix, everyone in that social location becomes mentally checked, begins to mentally check his or her subjective de definition of why this environment was constructed. In other words, the men in the bathroom want to know, is, am I in the right place? Because why is there a female in here? She, she don't fit the definition of the situation. She should not be in here. Or let me check and make sure that I came in to the right bathroom. So you see how other people's behavior and when things become abnormal to us, how we then check reality, we check the construct, we check the situation we are in to make sure we have defined it properly. And by defining it properly, we have behaved properly. By in other words, as men, when we see male on the door, we go into the bathroom. But when we go into the bathroom, we don't expect to see a female in there. Because then that would redefine the situation or the definition of the situation we're in. So in other words, um, the idea that a female walked into the men's bathroom has all kinds of ramifications and leaves the observer with questions about her, his or her understanding of the situation. The best way to deconstruct reality is to understand the origin of that reality and attempt to deconstruct it. The idea behind fluid reality is we all have choices. We decide where we want to be, who we want to interact with, and how we want others to define us. However, we have little control over the frame of our social reality. We can draw as many pictures as we can think of, but it will still fit within the socially constructed frame of society's definition of the picture we want. To understand the origin of our ideas and the socially constructed interactions, we need to dig deep into our so social or society's agents. In other words, we are socialized every day of our lives from birth to death. We are socialized. And until we understand the process of socialization, we will continue to just go with the flow. We will continue to be our realities that society has constructed for us. In other words, we will not come outside of the norms. Deviance breaks norms. In other words, deviant behavior can break certain realities that we've built for ourselves. When we see others going against the norms or going against what we have defined as the definition of the situation we're in, that becomes deviant behavior. And what it does is it shakes us and it says, you need to relook or rethink your reality. So our reality being socially constructed has ramifications for us that have yet to be identified. Agents of socialization are necessary to help the socialized society citizens and to prepare them for participation in society. Every day that we get up, we participate in society. We play our particular roles based on our social location and our definition of the situation. When a doctor go to work, they have to be prepared to play the role of a doctor based on the definition of what a doctor is supposed to do how they're supposed to act, and how they're supposed to dress. Otherwise, how will patients recognize the doctor? Their reality about the doctor's role is defined for them when they enter the office. If anything is out of the ordinary definition of the situation, then they will re have to redefine it. 
This will cause them to pick another response to the situation. It may cause them to look for someone else who fits their preconceived definition of a doctor, or they may leave the office and go where they know a doctor resides. So we can't always, um, we can't always define our situations by what we see. We really have to think hard because as we talked about earlier, um, when we look at reality, we're looking at the shapes, shapers or the, that which shapes reality and we don't really see it because it's invisible because we have become a part of the system. We have become a part of helping the system function by abiding by the rules, abiding by the norms, by accepting the definitions and the symbols and the language and by using them and reiterating them and then socializing it in our children from generation to generation, we help build society's reality for us. And so the social construction of reality is based on our understanding, our social interaction and our definition of the situation. As we have tried to explain, social interaction has many tentacles. <laughs> the man on the street inhabits a world that is real to him, albeit in different degrees, and he knows with different degrees of confidence that this world possesses such and such characteristics. People can get caught arguing about the subject of reality. For instance, we can argue all day about whether God is real or not. The issue is not whether God is real or not, but how did you formulate your definition one way or the other? How do you come to the place where you believe what you believe? Our believing God to be real or not does not make it so, but it does play a role in how we interact with life, with others, and ourselves. This is how we construct our reality. It is based on our definition of the situation. Now, this is this was a paper that I wrote um, when I was taking my sociology course and I was writing about uh, the social construction of reality because I had been so impressed in my heart that society plays a major role in how we define our reality and how we see ourselves functioning in this realm. In other words, without society, without groups and without um, uh, how what we would call class and without um, differences, we would everything would be the same. How would we know that we are in a society? How would we know what society is apart from groups? Society groups and names and some everything. It, it when you come out of the womb, you are already named and labeled to fit into a particular role, a particular group. And your reality is based on how you define or how you have been taught to define those groups, those names, and those situations. Your reality about you being male and female gender is based on society's construction of that reality. Your definition of a male and a female is based on society's definition of a male and a female. We know that there are differences, but we're talking about the labels. Um, you don't have to, um, you don't have to name something that is actually, um, um, a reality. You can put a male and a female on an island together and they will begin to look at each other as different. They won't know there's difference, but they will know that something is something. He, this is not the same as me. He is not me and I am not him. And they will begin to try to name those differences just so they can interact and relate to each other based on a reality they're, they're both sensing is there. And so society does that for us every day of our lives. And while we may believe that there are uh, influences that, in, that, that are outside of the realm of society, that is true. But it doesn't matter. Society has already labeled and defined and studied and probed in every area of life that we are going to experience. And those that they have not been able to probe into, they are probing into. And the other side of it is you have to remember 
that in society there are systems and there's stratifications and there's levels to understanding and knowledge and language and some levels of knowledge and language you will never aspire to because you will never be able to get into those higher echelons so in other words where knowledge may be increased and there may be more information for you to obtain to help further construct your reality you may never get that because society says some information is for you is for the masses and some information is not so we have to be able to um, think critically we have to be able to look at our situations and not give up hope that we are robots in this world because we help construct the reality of this world and so based on that we can understand the social construction of reality and i hope that this has helped you in some kind of way and has given you some kind of um uh, footing where you can take this information be and begin to build on it because this is not the end of the road for this uh, information. You can build on it, study on all of these discussions that we have, study these things, research them, and come to some conclusions. Don't just be spoon fed information. Yes, we are trying to train you and we're trying to give you an idea of some of the foundational principles that we're dealing with, but the reality of it is we are all still learning. Thank you very much and we will see you next time. Bye-bye.